We learn about it in school. We take advantage of the advancements made in science every day. But do you know where the word science comes from? Nope. You're not even gonna try. Nope. Great, now I'm gonna have to find someone at the last minute. Maybe I can try? Oh my god, it's Nemo. He's literally a science person. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a science person. Okay, all right, let me start with what I got. We can track the word science to Old French because in Old French, the word was science. How to do with pronunciation. Uh, and we got that from the Latin scientia, knowledge, from scire, to know probably originally meaning to separate one thing from another or to distinguish related to skindere, meaning to cut or divide. And that came from the Proto-Indo-European root ske, meaning to cut. You could also apply that to shis, like conscious, con meaning with, shis from the Latin scientia meaning knowledge, or in other words, to have knowledge of. I thought you weren't gonna stick around today. Oh no, I'll be here. The word scientist didn't come into use until 1834. Before then, scientists were called natural philosophers or cultivators of science. And the ific in scientific comes from ficus, from the Latin verb facere, meaning to make. Okay, you can take a break now. Back to you, Nemo. Hello there, I'm Nemo. Oh, wait, wait, so what kind of science person are you? Well, I have a background in marine biology, which doesn't really mean anything when you think about it. In fact, Biology comes from bios logia, which means the study of life. And the oceans contain 99% of all living space on Earth. So maybe being a marine biologist just means that I'm trying to understand life. But aren't we all? So right. Okay, so you're a marine biologist. We talked a little bit about the etymology of the word, but what does science mean? Um, I think it's very hard to give a clear definition of what science is. For me, it is the systematic study of the natural world, acquiring knowledge through a system of observations, um, hypotheses, and experiments. This is the scientific method which is an interesting pleonasm when you think about it, because method comes from the Greek methodos, which means pursuit of knowledge, which is kind of what science is already. Huh, that is kind of redundant. It's like when we say pin number, when the N in pin already stands for number. Yeah, or ATM machine, when the M already stands for machine. Humans are weird. Speaking of humans, I feel like we're constantly trying to learn about the world around us, right? And I feel like we're especially good at that when we're kids. Like, I used to ask a million questions to the point where the adults would tell me to stop asking them. Ah, so nothing's changed. Yeah, nothing's changed. You know, children are not dumb little humans. They are natural scientists. In fact, they conduct experiments and form theories about the world around them driven by the power of curiosity. And curiosity kind of helped our species to survive. Like our brains evolved to release dopamine in reaction to novelty, which in turn makes us more curious to learn more new things. Wild. Yeah, and when you think about it, if children are little scientists, then scientists are just big children. The only difference is that children build up a personal understanding of the world while scientists, they push at the boundaries of global human knowledge. Every new discovery is a little bump at the surface of the circle of all the things we know. A larger perimeter now in contact with even more unknown. Because the more answers we have, the more questions arise. And that is the never-ending cycle of curiosity. I love this so much. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Whew, okay, okay, so back to the ocean. It's pretty big, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of big. So that's a lot of stuff to study. Study from the Latin studium, meaning zeal or painstaking application. Thank you. So what life in the ocean specifically do you study? Oh, uh, I study cephalopods. It's a class in the animal kingdom that includes animals such as the octopus, the squid, the cuttlefish, or the nautilus. The word Cephalopod comes from the Greek kephale and podos, which mean respectively head and foot. 
And that is because cephalopods are essentially a head attached to a lot of feet. And for your mental safety, please don't try to picture that with human parts. Uh, he said don't try to imagine it. Ah, crap. Oh wait, I have a question, very important. What's the plural of octopus? Is it octopi? Okay, wow, that is a good question. Octopus is often pluralized as octopi. I knew it. Which is just wrong. Oh. You see, the letter I is a suffix to indicate the plural of a Latin noun, like cactus, cacti, stimulus, or stimuli. But octopus is not Latin. It is made of two Greek words, which mean eight feet. So if we have to pluralize it, we should probably pluralize it like a Greek word, like octopoes. So, problem solved? I guess so! No! Ah. Because there is a twist. Ancient Greeks and Romans, they did not call the octopus octopus. They called it polypus. In fact, the word octopus has a pretty recent origin. It was used for the first time during the 16th century as a scientific name to describe the species. And it's only from the 18th century that the word was adopted in everyday English. So, no, octopus is not a Latin noun, it is not a Greek noun, it's a made-up scientific noun. So we should just pluralize it as any other English word. Octopus, octopuses. Wait, octopuses is right? You heard the man. So you study octopuses. Are there any interesting facts that you've learned about octopuses that we may not know? Well, in 1829, the naturalist Georges Cuvier found what seemed to be an unidentified parasitic worm inside the body of a female octopus. He named it Ectocotylus, combining two Latin words that mean 100 hollow things. Because that worm had a ton of tiny little suckers. Oh my god, was she okay? Well, turned out that the worm inside the female was, <clears throat> how, how to say this, it was a penis. Yeah, because male octopuses, they have this specialized spoon-shaped arm that they use to pass a sack of sperm to the female. And sometimes it they touch us. We still call this weird penis ectocotylus today. And on that amazing note, thank you so much Nemo for being here today. Everyone, please click the link in the description box to check out his channel. Tell the people what you do. Mm, it's tough to define in a few words what I do, but I like to see my channel as a cocktail of science, entertainment, animation, and music. Well, in order to answer all those questions, we need to go to a very special place, Gothenburg, Sweden. Just go subscribe to him. I love him. His videos are amazing. You will love him. Just a whole lot of love. Thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting videos like this one. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, patreon.com slash soundlyawake, and I'll see you in a few days with a new video. Bye. Bye.